Hey there, my name is Josh. Thank you for joining me for another study session. I'm glad that you can be here. We're going to be taking a look at some well-known and well-worn Christian disciplines, but we're going to be doing it through the eyes of or the lens of the season of Lent. I grew up with Lent and I'm very familiar with that season or that uh, event on the church calendar, but Depending on your church background or your faith background, you may not be as familiar with it. So I wanted to share just a, a little bit or a very short history of what Lent is. So Lent is old. It, it, it dates back to probably 320, 325 AD. That's where we get the first mention of this particular season on the church calendar. And it really was an opportunity for the church to mirror this time that we read about in Jesus's life where he is on his way to the cross and he is filled with the Holy Spirit and he is brought into the wilderness. We're told that he is praying and fasting and maybe even more memorable is we find that he is tempted by the devil in some pretty significant ways. So Lent is meant to mirror that time. And maybe even more so, Lent is an invitation to you and to me to enter into a season of wilderness, a season where we decrease in order to allow God to increase. I know for me that if I didn't have something like Lent on the calendar, I doubt that I would be very interested in entering into a season of decrease or even walking into a, a wilderness, if you will. And so that's why Lent is important. It reminds us that there is something to be gained, something to be learned when we force ourselves to remove a lot of the distractions that come at us so fast in our lives. I think you would agree that we live in a time when things seem very fast. It seems like things are coming at us at breakneck speed, all the obligations, all the requirements, all the opportunities even. But there's a lot of things that are coming at us and so Lent is an opportunity for us to really set those things aside in order to focus in on our faith and focus in on God himself. Perhaps even deeper than that, Lent is an opportunity for us to recognize something that has always been there. It's an opportunity for something to be revealed that has always been there. And I kind of liken it to when we're driving around town. I know this has happened to me. I'll drive around town and I'll come to an intersection that I've passed many times and I'll see something for the very first time. But it's something that has always been there. And I think to myself, how did I possibly miss that? It's so obvious. It's even been as big as like, houses that have been there for years and yet I have never noticed them before. That's our life. That is how we kind of operate on a regular basis. We are unaware of so many things that pass by us or that we pass by on a day-to-day -day basis. Lent is that opportunity, opportunity for us to slow down and to allow ourselves, our distractions, the things of this world to decrease so that God himself might increase. One of the disciplines that I want to focus on in particular today is prayer. There are so many disciplines that we could look at. There is fasting, there is meditation and stillness there are you know, a multitude of other disciplines that we could look at. And, and we'll look at two more of those over the course of this series. But I wanted to start with one that is 
pretty well known, I think. I think all of us are well aware of prayer and we recognize how foundational it is to our faith. But I want to take an opportunity to take a look at it from, again, the perspective of Lent. What is prayer and why is it important? And I think if we boil it down to the very basic sentiment of what prayer is, it's simply talking to God. What can I possibly say about prayer at this point that hasn't already been said? But maybe if we just kind of pull back and we recognize it for the very basic thing that it is, that is an opportunity to talk to God, maybe that will help kind of reframe it a little bit. There are so many practices out there. There are so many techniques. There are so many processes that you can employ in order to strengthen your prayer life or to even just jumpstart it. There are a multitude of options available out there for you. But like when you're starting perhaps to commit to exercise, you are all in, you are gunning for it day in and day out. You're doing all the, all the work. And maybe the reason is that you wanna be a little bit healthier or you wanna be a little bit fitter or you know a multitude of reasons to do that but then you come to find that that motivation starts to wane that motivation starts to become less and less able to get you out of bed in the morning to exercise and you come to find out that the process is quickly becoming an obligation it's becoming something that is more of a chore than anything else i say that oftentimes what happens is that the purpose gets outpaced by the process so the things that we do are outpacing what we're doing it for or why we're doing it the same can be said for prayer if we don't have a strong commitment or a strong reason of why we are actually praying why we are committing to this prayer life then we can easily fall out of the practice and it becomes more of a chore than anything else. I have a friend who says that what she does every morning is she gets up, she has time in the Bible reading scripture, and then what she does is she actually pours a cup of coffee, places it on an empty chair right in front of her, and she proceeds to have a conversation with Jesus. She says it's having coffee with Jesus. And I love that. I love that visual that she has committed herself to something like that. What she's doing is she's making the invisible visible. It's a technique that she uses in order to commit to that time, to maybe make that invisibleness a little bit less awkward, a little less difficult to navigate. But I think ultimately what is at the root of that is that she wants to have that relationship with God. She wants to have that relationship with Christ. And so I think you and I can do the hard work in this time of Lent to really analyze and look at why do we pray or why don't we pray or what is it that is getting in the way of us praying? Do we want to talk to God? Do we want to have a relationship with our Father in heaven? If so, we need to talk to him. We need to be in conversation with him. Time and again, throughout scripture, we see Jesus stealing away for time with God. It's not something that comes at the end. It oftentimes is the very first thing that he goes to before any action comes next. And I find that to be really encouraging. I think it was Martin Luther who said that if I fail to spend two hours in prayer each morning, the devil gets the victory through the day. I have so much business I cannot get on without spending three hours daily in prayer. He didn't, he didn't step away from prayer, prayer. He actually stepped into and leaned into that time with God, recognizing that time with God would reveal something that perhaps was always there. 
and he just needed to take the time to talk to God and ultimately to listen. And I think that that's what happens in that exchange. There is an exchange that happens between the temporal, the world, and the divine. That is a holy space that you and I get to carve out of our days. And it's something that we should want. We should want to embrace it. We should want it with every fiber of our being because it is literally us being able to be in communion and be in community with God himself. In those moments too, I believe that God's spirit speaks to us. Maybe not in an audible voice. And again, maybe there's a little bit of that awkwardness in the exchange with there being nothing there in front of you, seemingly nothing there in front of you. But I think over time, what happens is that awkwardness starts to fade away and that we are left with the joy that comes from having those regular conversations with God, with our heaven, heavenly Father, with the one who created us, with the one who died for us, with the one who gives us life everlasting. So what is your purpose more than what is your process? What is the reason that you want to pray? What is the reason that you struggle with prayer? Those are things that you can all come to God with. And he will listen and he will be there for you. And he will speak in, that midst, in the midst of that wilderness that you find yourself. Ultimately, we can talk forever about prayer. Like I said, there is no shortage of books about prayer. There's no shortage of tips and tricks. There's no shortage of information about prayer. But I think so often we study about prayer that we forget to actually pray. And ultimately it comes down to just doing the thing. You and I need to commit to the thing. And that's what we can come away from Lent with is that we enter into the wilderness, we recognize the importance of prayer, we recognize how prayer is an opportunity for us to be aware of something that has always been there, which is God himself, and it's an opportunity for us to recommit and reconnect to our Heavenly Father. So like with most of these study sessions, what I wanted to do is leave you with one very practical opportunity or option for praying. And so often I think, again, what happens in the course of our lives is that we get all of this stuff kind of thrown at us. We start to get overwhelmed with all of the different things. And then we just kind of throw up our hands and are like, I don't even know where to start. But what Jesus did for us in Matthew 6 is that he provided us with the very prayer that we can pray when we don't know what to pray and even when we do know what to pray. It is the Lord's Prayer. It's well known. It's something that you and I probably have grown up with. There's various versions of it even. But I think sometimes going back to the basics, going back to what we are called to in scripture itself helps kind of relieve us of all of the extraneous things that have been added on along the way. When we're able to decrease, God is able to increase. And so instead of putting the pressure on us to come up with all the perfect words or to figure out all the perfect ways to say things or, you know, whatever it might be, let's remember and go back to the fact that Jesus gave us a prayer that we can focus on, that we can specifically have the words in front of us, that we can simply recite this prayer. And within that recitation, within that liturgy, something is revealed to us even in the midst of that. And so if you would turn to Matthew 6, it's verses 7 through 13. I'm not going to go through all of it here, but I just wanted to make sure that you knew where to go in Scripture to kind of find the context for that. This is the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. He said, if there's any prayer that you lift up to God, this is the one. 
It's a perfect combination of worship, of lament, of request. It's all of the things that we desperately try to have in our prayers and so often fail at because we struggle with all the things. And yet God, in his mercy and his graciousness, has given us a prayer that we can go back to time and again. So what I would ask of you, what I would invite you to do is commit to reciting the Lord's Prayer on a regular basis, even on a daily basis. Carve out that holy space in your day, even if it's five minutes, and recite that prayer. Just say it from your heart. Listen to the words as they come out of your mouth. Audibly say it or just read it, whatever it might be, but just be aware of the posture of your heart, be aware of the posture of your mind in the midst of that. And really commit to that exchange, the exchange of the temporal with the exchange of the divine. These words are holy, and so you have an opportunity to enter into a holy space in the midst of it. So to close our time together, I thought I could recite the Lord's Prayer. You can say it with me, or you can just allow these words to wash over you, maybe for the first time or the first time in a long time. Listen to the words. Listen to what they are saying, what they are inviting. Allow them to reveal something new, something new in you, something new to you, and ultimately something new about God, something that has always been there. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Again, there can be so many versions of that. Go to scripture to read that version, recite the version that you're familiar with, with whatever it might be. And let's commit to a season of renewed prayer, a season of renewed conversation with our Heavenly Father. And so that's it. Thank you again for joining me for this study session. We're going to have two more sessions on this particular topic. Next week, we're going to be talking about meditation and stillness. And I'm excited to share a little bit more insight into those practices with you. If you haven't already, I'd encourage you to, to subscribe to our YouTube channel. And you can do so by clicking the button below if you're on YouTube. That way you can be notified when new videos are added to our channel, whether they be new study sessions or otherwise. Again, I am grateful that you have taken the time to join us today. I hope that this starts a conversation with others, with friends, with loved ones, uh, with maybe a study group or a spiritual formation group. Maybe it starts a conversation within yourself that you can now have with God. Whatever it might be, I'm excited to um, walk along with you in this journey. And I wish you all the best. God bless.